Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Each year on Holy Saturday, we gather at 10 a.m. to say this short liturgy for the day that is appointed in the prayer book. Really, an abbreviated burial liturgy, the Holy Saturday liturgy, is meant to connect us to the experience of Jesus' disciples and friends as they carried his body to the tomb along with what their hopes had once been, wrapped the body in cloths, hoping to return later when they'd have more time to do the full anointing of the body with all the other traditional portions as well. They would have done this work on Friday, of course, after taking the body of Christ down from the cross, because for them Saturday would have been the Sabbath, a day when work was not permitted to be done. But given the grief the disciples surely felt on this Saturday, the Holy Saturday liturgy seeks to honor that grief and perhaps even allow us who have grieved the perceived absence of God in our own lives, the world, perhaps give us a space to grieve as well. The grief and despair is highlighted in the first lesson appointed for today that Mac read from the 14th chapter of Job. If you remember the story of Job, Job was a righteous man who Satan was sure was only righteous because he was blessed and protected by God. In a cosmic wager, God let Satan strike Job, sure that Job would maintain his faithful trust in the Lord. In quick succession, Job loses his wealth, his children, his own health, and he's left mourning in sackcloth and ashes. Three friends come to visit Job, offering him their advice. But like most of the advice of religious people, when you're in pain or grief, it's not very helpful. They primarily wind up blaming Job for his circumstances, insisting he must have deserved what he's got. These dialogues between Job and his three friends occur in three cycles, with our reading for today coming from the middle of the dialogue with the third friend, Zophat, in the very first cycle. You can feel the grief and hopelessness of Job in these verses. As he says, what so many sense have said. Does it really matter? Life is short, fleeting. After you die, all hope is lost. Unlike the destruction of a tree that could still produce shoots of growth, the death of a human has no life afterwards, Job says. For Job himself, though, this means he has no hope of standing before God and finally getting an answer for his suffering. And so he asks the question at the end of his question. The question of anyone who has approached death would likely ask at some point. If mortals die, will they live again? All the days of my service I would wait until my release should come. Job cannot see that there is more to his story than he's realized. Job doesn't know that God does stand on Job's side, that God has been defending Job over and over again. Job doesn't know that a day will come when Job will speak to God face to face while Job is still alive, answering Job's complaint with divine authenticity and truth. God is up to something in Job's life even though Job cannot see it now. Similarly, though on this day the body of Christ rested in the tomb, because of which today is sometimes called the great Sabbath of rest, Though it seemed to Jesus' disciples as though all hope was lost, as though the fear of Job that death would have the final say is actually the true and final word. Though it looks like that, God is at work doing something, something the disciples have not yet seen. In this way, the Eastern Orthodox liturgies actually help for this day, I think. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, their liturgies focus not only on the grief and mourning surrounding Christ's death on Holy Saturday, but their liturgies also insist on watchful expectation. You can hear that in one of the prayers they use. Today thou dost keep holy the seventh day, which thou hast blessed of old by resting from thy works. 
Thou bringest all things into being, and thou makest all things new, observing the Sabbath rest, my Savior, and restoring strength. On Holy Saturday, God in Christ is restoring strength because of the work God did on this day, where in the tradition of the church, God descended into Christ and God descended into hell and raised up those who have died. Christ undoes death so that when Christ rises from the dead on Easter Sunday morning, it is not only his own new life we celebrate, but we celebrate that Christ is the first fruits of all of us who have died. Not only mortal death, but the small deaths that you die just by simply living in this sometimes broken and painful life. In Christ's triumph over death and hell on Holy Saturday, we see our own death undone by God's love. And in some ways, you all are a symbol of the work God is doing, a work that is so often outside of our own sight. Because while the rest of the church is waiting for Easter to come, pondering their menus for dinner tomorrow, making plans for guests and friends and parties. You are here, working. After this liturgy, many of you will get to work preparing for the Easter joy and celebration others will enjoy, though your work is sometimes unseen by the rest of the church. So you are a symbol of God's work, and I thank you for that. Keep your eyes always open, beloved of God, to the extra work God may do in your life in the world, particularly when it all seems so dark and scary. Work maybe you do not always see. And if you cannot see God, know that God's love is there, bringing life where there had been death. And know that sometimes it is you God is inviting into that work of bringing life into someone else's darkness. Because it is life and love that will triumph at the end. Before I end my meditation for today, I have one more thing I want to say that was not the written homily, but that my sister sent me. A poem for Holy Saturday, and I just realized that I didn't bring my phone with me church, which is probably a good idea. Let me go snack from over there. One second. I'll be right back, okay? I'm hungry. So shall we all. This is a Holy Saturday poem by Marin Terabasi. Today, Malchus, the high priest's slave, is rubbing his ear. The woman who reached out to touch his clothing is enjoying, of all things, regular menstrual cramps. A family today opens their door to a child because of the prodigal story that had been so frequently retold at Traveler's Inns and Village Wells. Today, a tribune resigns his commission, refusing to participate in the empire anymore. And today, Jesus is preaching to the dead, telling them to be ready for his well-planned prison break. Preaching to the dead, even the guy with bigger barns, the woman whose oil burned out at the gate of joy. And as Jesus preaches, he just catches the eyes of Judas. It's never a detour when Jesus goes to hell. And if Easter is really every Sunday, Saturdays, will always find Jesus visiting you, me, and those dear to us who are lost in hell. 
And if we cannot find our keys, he gives us left.